Now, the Honda Civic has always been the Japanese version of the people's car. I mean, that's what Civic means. Civic means citizen or people. But for the past few generations, the Civic seems to be heading up market and it seems to be alienating its original market. You know, tuners, young guys who can't afford bigger cars. But what we have here right now seems to be the sweet spot for me when it comes to Honda Civics. What's going on guys, Roy Robles here for zigwheels.ph and today we'll be reviewing this Honda Civic, the entry level Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC. Now you've seen us review the Honda Civic V variant, which is the mid-grade variant, and that had quite a few many toys, especially on the exterior, but this one kind of scales it right down. The headlamps, they still feature those LED DRLs right here, but they now have halogen headlamps. They still have those vertical slats there for the grill, and you even have those honeycomb grill at the bottom. But if, as you can notice, the honeycomb grill holes, as you can see, they're kind of broken in a weird pattern. And I'm trying to find some sort of logic behind that pattern, but now it definitely seems to be there to give optimum airflow into the turbocharger right there inside. You can see a camera up top in the windshield right there. And this is still the entry level Honda Civic, but it still has Honda sensing. And I'll be explaining to you that what it is later on in the drive. Overall, the front end of the Honda Civic 11 generation might take some getting used to, especially if you're used to the aggressive looking and sharp 10th generation Civic, but it kind of grows on you, don't you think? Now, heading over to the side profile of the Honda Civic S Turbo, the biggest change that you'll see right here are those smaller alloy wheels. The Honda Civic S has these smaller 16 inch alloy wheels, but I think they really fit quite well. It actually fits in these chunkier 215, 55 series tires, and it's gonna be great, especially when you're going on the road. Now, the side profile definitely gives you this clean overall look. It's got this horizontal stripe that goes all the way from the headlamps to the back right there. Plus, it still features that fastback design. It's not a fastback, but it still features the fastback design that was carried over from the 10th generation Civic. Now, heading over to the C-pillar right here, it features this interesting kink that actually breaks the overall monotony of the design. Honda doesn't want to give you basic designing right here, but for the Civic, this little quirk right here gives it an overall package that I think really changes the entire dynamic of the exterior. Overall, the side profile of the Honda Civic features clean lines. Again, it's a breakaway from the 10th generation Civic, which features sharp and aggressive kind of lines. But overall, like I said, this design, the 11th generation, really, really grows on you. Now, all right, the rear of the Honda Civic features my favorite part of the design. Even though you're getting the entry level Honda Civic, you still have those LED tail lamps right there. Now you got your reflectors right there below and underneath you'd find dual port exhaust. But since this is the entry level Civic, it's definitely not as pronounced as let's say the top of the line RS model. It also has this weird ducktail looking design up here and you don't actually need to have a ducktail spoiler there because it has it uh, built into the boot. Okay, so you also have that shark spin antenna up top, which is pretty basic, pretty standard. And it, I think really completes the overall package. Again, kudos to the engineering guys when it comes to Hondas, especially with the Civic. I mean, they give you all these practical measures, these practical features without actually having to go for the more expensive part. This is the entry level Honda Civic, but unlike the previous model's entry level variant, this has split folding rear seats. So as you can see, these tabs right here, just pull on these tabs and the rear seats will fold to a 60-40 split configuration, which was not found on the 10th generation, which is definitely a great value for this type of car. Let's take a look at the inside. All right, so sitting in the driver's seat of the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC, you definitely find a lot of things that kind of makes you feel that this isn't an entry-level variant. For example, the steering wheel, although swathed in polyurethane without an inch of leather in sight, you still see all the buttons right here on the steering wheel without any blank ones. Speaking of the gauge cluster, it's digital right here on the left for the tachometer. You can even select the different modes of what you want to see while you drive, but you still have the analog gauge cluster right there for your speedometer. 
Now the dashboard also features the same design, which has that cheese grater grill design for the AC vents. You've seen this before. And of course you can have your automatic climate control with this clicky dials right here. Plus one complaint about the previous generation Honda Civic, especially when it was first released, is the lack of volume knobs. So not only do you have knobs for the AC vents right here, you also have volume knobs and a list select knob as well. That seven inch touchscreen infotainment system, by the way, powers four speakers right here inside. So the thing about the four speaker system though is that once it gets up in volume, the sound kind of gets a little rumbled, kind of, gets, kind of gets a little bit scratchy. So it's best that you keep it at a minimum or maybe replace them with some performance speakers. The touchscreen does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, thankfully. But here's a one more quirk about the Honda Civic. It only has one USB port. So if someone else wants to charge their phone, they're gonna have to want to purchase a separate charger to plug into the 12 volt socket right there. So you got a shifter right here. And of course your Ecom button. There's a blank button right here. That must be for the sport mode in the uh, RS model. You got your electronic parking brake and automatic brake hold. And of course it's got manual adjustment for the seats. I kind of prefer manual uh, adjustments, especially for, uh, for the driver's seat, because if you remember this TikTok meme where if you need to save yourself from someone in the back, all you gotta do is just recline the seats like this ah, and then push the guy like that. <laughs> Just kidding, but you can't be able to, you won't be able to do that with power seats because it's gonna be so slow and you, you're a goner. So everything's really great. Everything's well put together. There are a couple of features that I wish it had in the front right here. For example, more USB ports, a bigger screen probably, but it's definitely workable and modern looking, especially for a car in 2022. But let's head on over to the back and see how that works out for the rear passenger. All right, on the second row of the Honda Civic S Turbo, you definitely see a lot of space here. Even three of myself can definitely sit uh, comfortably well in the back, which is awesome. As you can see here, the seat is reclined all the way back because this is my preferred driving position, especially with Honda Civics. This center tunnel though is kind of a hassle because if anyone wants to sit in the middle, they're gonna have to be either putting their feet up in the center tunnel or they're gonna have to share some <laughs> foot space with the left and right passengers. Now here's my issue with the second row seats. It does not have any toys to, to begin with. There are no USB ports, there are no air con vents at all, but you do have a center armrest. Well, at least it's got something. And the seats are really supportive. If you ask me if you wanna take me to Baguio or La Union, I would definitely see myself sitting right here for long drives. It's very basic, it's very Civic-like to say the least. Got a lot of space, man maximum, and yes. I saw the comment right there below before saying that Honda kind of went too far with the man maximum and machine minimum, because there's really very minimum machines in the, in the back right here. But here's where all the machines and engineering goes through. Let's go to the drive and let's take us out on the road. All right, Honda Berlin check, and we are behind the wheel of the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC. So right off the bat, under the hood, you've got a 1.5 liter turbocharged VTEC engine that makes 176 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque. And wow, in the previous generation Honda Civic, you'd have to, you know, spring for the top of the line RS variant just to get that power under the hood for a Civic, but this time around, even the entry level variant has that engine. It's made it to a CVT. Now, a lot of people would lament the fact that it has a CVT, but I gotta tell you guys, oh, it definitely brings forth all that power to the front wheels without any dramas at all. The power delivery is definitely quite linear, so it's not gonna give you that shock of power and that's how I like my small displacement turbocharged cars and that, that's what the Civic has. It's really great. Braking's really good as well. It's not spongy at all and it doesn't give you that quick biting feeling. It's well modulated, I gotta say. It's really fine. Now thanks to the smaller alloy wheels, you get thicker and chunkier tires than the V variant or even the RS. And that actually translates 
to a more comfortable drive inside because if you have thicker sidewalls for your tires, it definitely takes on those road imperfections like a champ. But engine noise, you can definitely hear that from the inside though. Right, so suspension wise, you got McPherson struts up front and independent suspension in the rear. Now what that translates to is that you've got great steering, especially for a front wheel drive car. Having independent suspension inside a front wheel drive compact car really helps you out, especially with comfort as well as maneuverability and steering. Now because those tires have a higher sidewall though, it's not going to be as, as responsive as the RS, or a little more the Type R, but at least you get the feeling that you're one with the car. It's very responsive. It definitely takes you where you need to go. For example, this small curve right here, oh wow. There's minimal body roll inside, and I gotta say, this Civic feels like a Civic. Coming from a Civic owner, it definitely feels very familiar inside. All right, now fuel economy has always been a hallmark of Honda Civics. So in the city, with traffic and with kids going back to school these days, you get around nine kilometers per liter. And I'd say that's not bad, especially for the power that you have under the hood. Nine kilometers per liter in the city, especially with all the traffic, that's definitely uh, very acceptable, especially for this kind of car. Now out on the highway, because of the gearing, the CVT, it can actually keep the revs low, especially at cruising speed. Highway fuel economy, as I've tested, I was able to get around 18 kilometers per liter on the highway. Right, so safety features in the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC include your standard airbags, you got your ABS with the electronic brake force distribution, you've got your traction control, you know, everything that should be basic in a car from 2022. But what I'm glad that Honda placed in the entry level Civic is of course Honda Sensing, which is their suite of active and passive safety features. So it's got forward collision mitigation system, lane keep assist, low speed follow, it's even got adaptive cruise control, automatic high beams, lead car notification, which is very useful, especially in stop and go traffic. It tells you if the car in front of you has already went out. And unlike other cars out there, but what we just experienced right now, they actually had their car stop and without knowing probably on their phones, but keep off your phone so you're driving. Always make sure that your eyes are on the road up front, but in case you're not aware that the car in front of you has already went out, it has that as well. So everything that you'll find in even the top of the line Civic, the RS variant, when it comes to Honda Sensing, you'll find it in the entry level Honda Civic S Turbo. Yes. Now what it doesn't have though are multiple cameras, especially when you're backing up or parking sensors, but what you do have just a single camera when you're on reverse. All right, so pricing for the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC starts at 1,360,000 pesos. You gotta ask yourself, 1,360,000 pesos, that seems like a lot of moolah, especially for a sedan nowadays. But here's what I've noticed though. It seems like the hype following the Honda Civic has been on an up and down trend. Now it started with the sixth generation EK, everyone was crazy about it. Then you've got oh, the ES, the seventh generation, which is my personal car. And then you've got the FD, everyone was crazy about it. Then you got the FB where I've seen some comments probably right there, they're actually threatening me to bring their FB right next to me and then rev it high up. I mean, come on guys, every FB owners know what it is. Then you've got the previous 10th generation, which is wow, bonkers, crazy. Now, do I think that the this generation, the 11 gen break that curse? I think that it really depends on the culture surrounding the owners or the fans of Honda Civics. Personally, as a Honda Civic owner myself, it definitely is something that might be you might, might want to consider, especially when in, in the market for a compact sedan. And at that price point, 1,360,000 pesos, with the Honda Sensing, with the features that you have inside, especially all this space, oh my goodness, it definitely might be a compelling argument to make to purchase a Honda Civic. And I really love that you've got a car that you can easily modify. So that's our review of the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC. Now before we go, I'd like to give you a few things that I don't like and three things that I love about this car. Now the first thing that I don't like about the Honda Civic S Turbo is that 
Well, the exterior definitely features some cost-saving items, but because of that, it definitely decreases the overall look and the appeal of the Honda Civic. I mean, when the Honda Civic first came out, especially in the RS and the V variant, it definitely looked quite the looker. But in this case, 16-inch wheels, the omission of fog lamps and the halogen headlamps definitely give it a more subdued kind of look for the Honda Civic. The second thing I don't like about this Honda Civic is the speaker system. I mean, I, I don't usually listen to music when I go down the road. I usually just listen to podcasts or all that or listen to the engine hum. But in this case, the four speaker system seems to be very basic and it's kind of scratchy, especially in higher volume. So an upgrade would definitely work for this Honda Civic. Now, the last thing I don't like about this Civic is, of course, the lack of toys. The fact that it only has one USB port, well, is kind of confusing to me, especially for a car in 2022. You can find cars which are lower in price points and even crossovers that have multiple USB ports, especially these days where everyone, including your dog, has a gadget they need to charge. Just having one USB port is definitely problematic for me. Now you've heard my nitpicks, here are the three things that I love about the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC. Now even though this is an entry-level sedan, it still has Honda sensing. I'm glad that Honda was able to give its advanced driver assist systems to the most basic variant of the Honda Civic, and I wish that many other companies would follow suit, especially with their entry-level cars. The second thing I love about it is the interior space. Now I had a few passengers inside and they kind of commented that is this the new Honda Accord? Because the interior space is definitely massive and quite staggering, especially if you put three passengers in the back. Three of me would definitely fit quite comfortably in the back if not for the center tunnel. And the third thing I love about the Honda Civic S Turbo is the engine and transmission. Now CVT has long been quite the four letter word, especially with car enthusiasts. But trust me guys, you gotta try it, especially with the 1.5 liter turbocharged VTEC engine. 176 horsepower and 240 newton meters of torque is nothing to sneeze about, especially in a car with this weight and this size, it's just amazing. And that's our review of the Honda Civic S Turbo VTEC. What do you think? Drop us a comment in the comment section down below and tell me if you think that this carries over with the Civic Heritage and if it's a better car than the previous generation. While you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate all your support, your likes, your comments. But hey, this is Roy Robles from zigwheels.ph. I'll see you guys next time.